Hey Choppers, today I'm here at Dundercon 43 with Johnny Pack, yeah. the designer of a Coloma that is on Kickstarter now and it's being published by Final Frontier Games, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about it. I was watching you play it in the Protospiel room here, you know, and uh, yeah, go ahead and tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so, so in a nutshell, it's, it's a American West themed game based around the California Gold Rush in the town of Coloma, where uh, some gold was first discovered, kind of kicked off the whole craze. And uh, it's it's actually local to me where I live, so I've, I'm kind of steeped in the history and the all that. And so it's it's been fun to build upon that part of it. And of course, uh, it's a Euro style game, and so of course, in a lot of Euros, there's economic elements mm -hmm. and you're building cities and all yeah. that. And the uh, core mechanic is this boom and bust thing. So it's kind of based on an idea of if too many people choose the same action, that they, they bust and do a lesser version of the action. And if you can kind of break away from the batch, you might be able to do something that's twice as good. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of... Yeah, and that's all controlled by a rotating dial in the middle of the yeah. board. And yeah. I saw, I saw yeah. that when I was watching you guys play it. I was like, that's... That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, it's, it's in one sense, I guess it could be a gimmick, but it was the early prototype didn't even have the dial. It was just like, you know, this place is good, that place is like this. And then we started to make it actually kind of a gizmo that uh, each turn, uh, kind of a pie slice of this wagon wheel moves over and it, it blocks out one action altogether. So at this point, you can't uh, say, use your wheelbarrows this time around. Yeah. And so leave some other ones available and the players are have a kind of a mirror little smaller version of that wheel and they're going to rotate that to select which action they want to do all simultaneously. Okay. They put that face down on the table and then uh, once everybody's ready you reveal it and you put your, your meeples there so your workers yeah. go out and that's when we kind of look and see all right is there a place that more meeples went than others so you kind of go all right that place has the most pioneers and so you rotate the, uh, the little bust thing and it's yeah. like a little x and it covers up 50 percent of the circle mm -hmm. so the people in that spot don't get the bonus action and anybody that was out in the other spots does, does their action yeah. and it's kind of like a clock so we go around and we do like everybody that's at the site one do all your little things everybody over here do yours you build your cards you get your move your wagon and do each of these little actions and uh, a lot of these don't butt heads with each other so uh, you can do them kind of simultaneously. Yeah. Somebody over here might be doing their wagon while you're figuring out which card you want to build in your tableau, and then you add all this stuff up, and then you take your pioneers back, and you adjust that pie slice one more, uh, reset your dials, <laughs> yeah, and then dial. rinse and repeat, and you do yeah. that 15 times. Yeah. So There's also a, a combat uh, um, you know, action yeah, to yeah. it. I know you had a, like little black figurines. Yeah, for the, so, so, uh, so you got the bandits, and they're yeah. the outlaws in the game. So the idea with that is you know, notorious with those old gold rush towns is... <sighs> You know, some people like what you got, and they come with pistols, and oh, you got yeah. to kind of protect yeah. it and all that. So yeah, it happens nowadays. So, so <laughs> in a, in the Euro sense, you know, I love Euro games. So this whole thing is like, uh, people might think, oh, is, is it you know this crazy dice chucking blub thing? It's like not really. What, what it's really actually like is like in Stone Age or Agricola, where you're you are feeding your people at the end of the season. Yeah. And this one, it's a kind of semi cooperative thing where. Uh, you know, the bad guys are there, and you have to put some gunmen out to protect at yeah. the end of the round, and make sure that you don't end up with your meeples in your graveyard. Oh. And if you put the most gunmen out there, you also get some rewards in that scale. So it does have that uh, semi-cooperative thing that if you and I and everybody else, we can outnumber the outlaws, <laughs> we'll go to this pay matrix where it's like the person with the most gets really good, they become the sheriff, and all this happens. Now if we get lazy, and we can't beat them, then the pay matrix goes way down where the person who has the most still gets some stuff, second most gets a little bit, but everybody else, some of their meat, more of their meat will die. <laughs> yeah. And so it gets kind of worse. And so there's kind of this, this point of stress there. And uh, what builds that up is I really want the shootout to not be just this predictable thing. I had people say, hey, it's got to be a Euro game. You got to, you know, at five rounds early, you got to flop out a card that's going to tell you how bad the bad guys are yeah. so we can have time to prepare. And I'm like, Oh, you're going to tell me where the bullets are going to land? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you look at, like, output random and just go, it's like, oh, it makes sense just to chuck some dice at that moment or flop a card and see what happens mm -hmm. and see how this shakes out. But, um, I didn't want to do that, so I ended up doing this semi-co-op thing where uh, there's these, these little barrels with these really good bonuses behind the outlaws. Yeah. And you can take an action and go steal one of their barrels and, and do that action. But the more barrels you take, the more outlaws come out. So yeah. as, as people will get greedy and defect more and more, it becomes this big <laughs> horde. And it's kind of like, oh, man, you just made that bad. How are we going to put out this fire? And they're like, I don't know. How are you going to put out this fire? <laughs> yeah. you know? And so you get that social element. So it's, it's, the, it's not random, but it's driven by, you know, kind of like 
opportunistic greed and things like that. Yeah, right? everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody's too greedy, it gets yeah. worse. But then everybody's got to work together, right? To handle right, the problem. Right, right. Yeah, and so they get the little gold nuggets on there for the resources and everything. Mm-hmm, everybody gets mm-hmm. paid on the in the gold nuggets. And so yeah. really, the and I saw the player boards are set up really well, where you can add like rivers and bridges and stuff to it. Yeah, yeah. So so you kind of have, you know think like a play map. One of the things with some of these games is like there's there's games where you have like active meeples over here mm-hmm. uh, I, that are in front of you and you have the non-active one in the reserve. Mm-hmm. A lot of games like this and just naturally, you know, like reaching for chips or whatever else, people just start, you know, to grab from, no, 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 not from those ones, these ones. <laughs> and which one's which? Yeah, and so we're like, all right, they need to be somewhere. Yeah. They need to be able to think. And that was just like, okay, well, if they need to be here and then we can put all the little dead guys in this graveyard and then yeah. they got your starter engine over here and you got a spot to park your deck your car and so you can kind of manage your board and of course that's just real estate perfect for adding stuff to yeah so in this case you have the the kind of mouths of rivers on the top of that and in the gold country there's a lot of rivers that fork off so you like that sounds bad but <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the <a> proper term <laughs> it's the proper term you know the rivers in gold country fork off but um so you basically like uh columbus on the south fork of the american river and then you have these other ones so in uh, as people were exploring these spots, of course, it was one of the things where you find the confluence where they come together and you go up there and explore and try to find an untapped area. So uh, you're not building rivers in this game, you're actually surveying them. So you've kind of taken that river that you've got the mouth of and it extends a little bit and creates this little arc. Okay. And that's the foundation of what you can then build a bridge over. Mm-hmm. And so back at the end, you know, they just had the wagon trails and a, and a river was something that wagons couldn't get over easy. So they make these little makeshift bridges. They, washed out floods and so as you're as you're building up you get to you know survey the rivers and then that allows you to put the bridge on top so you got your mat you can build rivers and then the bridges and the bridges are kind of like your end game scoring thing yeah like the big buildings in puerto rico then you know it's like for every horse you have get three points like that kind of thing yeah yeah. each one has like a mm -hmm. a different symbol on there it tells you how much you get per thing for each end game right for each one you have built Above mm-hmm. your rivers on above your board. Right, right, yeah. So that's that's kind of that like end game thing. So you have a few different end game things like how much of the map you explore goes mm-hmm. up in kind of a triangular scoring. Uh, how many dead guys you have is losing some points, and then you get points for the uh, the bridges yeah. based on what you've accomplished in the game. So, yeah. And then the rest of the points are kind of like in game, you know. You get, point salad here and there yeah well it looks it looks really awesome and i hope uh, the viewers that are watching this video they you know, see the the little shots we took of them while they're playing <laughs> yeah. and they, you know, they, they, they hope the kickstarter does really well i hope so too yeah, so, yeah. It, it, it looks it looks so, it looks great yeah. when people see it and they see the different videos can you tell me a couple other reviewers and everything covered mm-hmm. uh covered the game yeah. you know and they get to see them and they see these shots and everything yeah, I hope they. I hope yeah, it. Uh, I hope it gets out. Yeah, yeah I hope like, so too. I mean, I'm excited about it. you know. It'd be nice to kind of break in finally. It's been yeah. a lot of you know working on this game for I don't know two years straight, something like that. Yeah, so, and it looks it looks like it looks like it's really well done. I know you were doing a couple of little things yeah, there yeah, in the last playthrough. Saw you. Yeah, just little refinements and everything. Just. Yep. Little, little, but little yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah that, that, that's how it always is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's not done until it's done, and then there's probably something where you like wake yeah, up in the night and you're like. Should have been a one or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear from a couple of designers. Even though when a game goes to print, afterwards they're looking at it, it's fully manufactured, and they're yeah. like, Man, I could have done that a little it's better. Like, it's, like, it's like getting a tattoo, you know. It's like, I hope, it, I hope it's good, and I hope Thursday I can live with the rest of my life. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you uh, for being here with me on Behind the Mask. You know, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, talking to you and uh, and seeing your game, seeing Coloma. It's on Kickstarter now by Final Frontier Games. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure you get over there to the Kickstarter. We'll put a link to it in the description of this video. So just go ahead and hit it. Send right over there and make sure you hit that pledge button and uh, to help the game get manufactured. Yeah. All right. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining me. And uh, everybody at home, happy gaming.